Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, everyone online, can you hear me okay? So, you're testing it again. Okay, great. All right, good morning here, everyone. How's everyone doing? Okay, sorry for the delay. Uh, because of no power, we had to just charge our laptops for a while. Hopefully, this is the power. Starts. Okay. All right, so we were doing chapter two last week. We talked about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. 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 Okay, so we talked about the message of the cross, and more than anything uh, that we do, we have to rely on the message of the cross, right? We talk about the power of the gospel. Um, every time we share the gospel with people, it's the power of God, right? So we're not relying on our own abilities, even though we have to prepare and share with people, but we're relying on the power of God and the power of His Holy Spirit to minister to them, right? And you all got your books, not yet? Okay, so we looked at the Greek word so so, and we saw that it's not just one word, but it has different meanings, right? Uh, let's just look at that uh, few things that we spoke about. Um, sozo is spiritual salvation, forgiveness of sins, healing of sicknesses, uh, preservation from danger, uh, it is preservation from the works of the devil, right? And each one of us, when we receive salvation, we receive all of this. Right. Yes, Second Corinthians five seventeen. Anybody knows it? Students online. Anybody knows Second Corinthians five seventeen? Okay. Second Corinthians five seventeen. How many of you know it in your own language? Second Corinthians five seventeen. Sorry. What's the one? Not sure, it's okay. Don't be worried. New creation. The whole verse is new creation. All of them are fumbling here. So it is if anyone is in Christ, it's a new creation. Why don't you have to learn this verse by heart? Please learn it. This is something that is basic. Okay, we learn this. Second Corinthians five seventeen, right? Uh, we know that salvation, when we receive Christ, we are a new creation. But when we say salvation, it's not just one thing, right? It is all these that are given to us, right? Now, isn't it such a you know wonderful feeling to walk in this authority? Right? And we talked about last week, right? we talked about authority as well. If you have the authority, you have to use that authority. Nobody else can use it for you. Right? And so we saw about how we have to present the gospel. Let's move on. Uh, how do I share the gospel with people? Right? Now, we all have come here to learn, to study. Right? Uh, now you may say, hey, I'm not an evangelist. I'm just a worship leader, or I'm just a, uh, I'm just a pastor. I'm just coming to learn, and then I go back to the ID company and I work in the ID. Now it doesn't matter where you're coming from. It doesn't matter where you're going. You and I are all to present the gospel to people, right? In different scenarios, in different ways, we are called to present the gospel. Now, how we present the gospel is very important, right? Now, imagine you've got a person who comes here and starts teaching, and it's boring, right? Sitting there, right? No one talking, and nothing is going. Will you, will you be interested to listen? Yes or no? Because it's it's not capturing you, right? 
What about like at a moment when you're listening to somebody and they're talking about you know how they from failure they came to success and how God used them? There's so much of you know you're you're, you're in with that person. You're, you're you're in line with what he, he or she is saying, right? The same way in presenting the gospel, right? You've got that fight within us, and you must capture when you should know that five minutes should come. Right? Five minutes should come. So, for example, if you're doing a video, right, on YouTube, what is it? What is what is the first thing you do? You have an intro, you have a message, and then you have an outro for what you want to say. Right? Now, the intro itself is boring. Do you think we're going to listen to it? Yes or no? Uh, people will skip, right? But if the intro is something that is capturing the you, they will listen to it. Same way in presenting the gospel. Now there are a couple of ways, right? There's something called as the four spiritual laws, right? Four spiritual laws. Now this is one of the ways to share the gospel with people. And so, for example, somebody comes and says, "Hey." Um, you know, what is this thing about Christianity? I always thought that Christianity is a religion that came from the West, right? From the West, some people came and what is it about Christianity? Now, you know, you've got five minutes, not more, you've got five minutes to share at that moment. Five minutes, right? So, how can you share effectively? So, we have something called as a four spiritual laws, right? So, what are the four spiritual laws? You're just bringing out the importance of the person, the human being, the nature of the human being. First of all, every man is a sinner. The post spiritual first one, every man is a sinner. Right? So let's read Romans chapter 3 and verse 10. Anybody can read Romans 3 and verse 10. There is none righteous, there is not one. As it is written, there is not one righteous. There is no one righteous. Right? So you are starting with the first one. Every man is a sinner. No one is righteous. Now you can grow up to a person from another faith. He may, he or she may be high in the faith. Maybe a leader in their faith. But if you tell them this, they will still believe it. Every man is a sinner. Right? The, the Hindu faith have a way of asking for forgiveness. The Islam, Islam as a faith have their ways of asking for forgiveness. Right? So so Jainism, Muslim, all of these things, they have ways of asking for forgiveness. None of the religions say that man is perfect. There's no religion that says. So the moment you say this, every man is a sinner, they will identify the right. Okay, yeah, I know, I know. So what is the second law? Sin has its consequences. Let's read Isaiah chapter 59, 1 and 2. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. We hope the Lord's hand is not shortened. That it cannot save, nor is given plenty that it cannot cure. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden this place from you, so that I will not help you. Yeah, this is so wonderfully put there, right? Your, your iniquities, your sins have separated you from. So then he's saying that you're saying there are consequences. Hey, there is consequences for sin. Right? Now, if I do. Like one of the ways that you can, if you're talking to a friend, you can tell them, hey, if I make a wrong decision, I have to go through the consequences. Yes or no? Right? So, for example, you have a friend in college. This person keeps bumping college. Finally, at the end of the semester, the attendance is 10%. Now, he can't, whether he's Christian, Muslim, Hindu, he can't say, I'll pray and God will give me uh, the. All together, it will not, never happen. That is the consequences of what he has done. Like, how much ever he prays, it's not going to happen. Because he has made the mistake of pumping class, missing class, his attendance is fine. 
So when you are staring at me like that, don't be afraid. Right? But you get what I'm saying, right? Our consequences is sometimes our own actions. Sometimes we are praying and rebuking the devil. The devil is saying, I don't have anything. We are gone. Yes or no? Yeah, I don't have anything. So sad, devil. It's our own mistakes. And we have to face the consequences. So you're saying here, sin has its consequences. Right? It takes us away from God. And that is true. Right? Then it says, but God's love and the work that Jesus did on the cross, the provision for God to bring us back to him. Right? Now, isn't it, you know, every time I read the scriptures, I keep telling people, Picture what you read. Right? The greatest nation with your imagination. Yes? Imagine, think. So when I'm reading the scriptures, I think. Imagine, okay, Jesus, 30 years old, he's walking. He's walking those dusty roads of Palestine. And then there are people following. He's there on the mountain. Thousands of people are there. There's five loaves of bread and two fish. Do they all of you have breakfast? Yes? No? Don't, don't worry. Good to have breakfast. Right? Five loaves of bread and two fish. Do we just read it flippantly or do we imagine it? Right? Always imagine it. Picture what you need. When you picture things, it becomes a vision inside you. Right? So now you're painting a picture for those who are listening to you. I'm a sinner, but I have sinned, gone away from God. But through the Lord Jesus Christ, through the cross, what Jesus did is that separation was brought back. Now the next question they may ask is, why Jesus? Then you got another opportunity for you to Continue that discussion. That means they are interested to know. Right? You get what I'm saying? Right? So, every man is a sinner. Sin has its consequences. God made a provision through Jesus Christ to bring us together. And the fourth law is when you believe, you will be saved. Four simple steps. Anybody who is hearing this, can accept it and become a believer. Simple sir. Do we have to do anything physically? Do we have to do any work? All we have to do is speak the word of God, preach or teach the word of God. That's all we have to do. These are the four spiritual goals. Right? Now, when you're ministering to somebody, don't if somebody asks, don't say, come sit down and tell you what are the four spiritual goals. They don't know about all that. Right? This is just for us, our side, to know, okay, there's a pattern. I can share the gospel in an effective way. Right? So can we see the four points, those online? Those online, uh, it's not clear. Uh, yes, Rina? Did you raise your hand? Do you have a question? No. We cannot hear clearly. Okay, now it's online. Is it okay now? No. no, no,
Okay, I'm just checking. Uh, how about now? I just try to log into the uh, Logitech webcams uh, on your. Uh, is it audible now? Yeah, uh, Prabhu, is it audible now? Everyone can hear clearly? Not clear, not clear. Okay, I think I think it's because uh, I'm I, I'm not using the laptop's audio. I'm using the webcam's audio. Uh, my laptop battery is going to drain up. So, uh, is it okay now? It's not too audible. Let's record again. Is it audible now? So same. It's same. It's the same. Yeah, same. Yeah, but you're able to hear, right? It's not clear enough. About now, is it audible now? Just like before, oh, it's okay. Just continue, sir. There's nothing much I can do because I've tried every option. Yeah. It's okay. Just continue. Okay, okay better. Okay, uh, sorry, sorry for now. Cut off. And, uh, okay, so let's go to the four spiritual laws again. One, every man is a sinner, sin has its consequences, and God's love and Christ's provision brings us back to God. Finally, when you believe, you will be saved. So those are the four spiritual thoughts you can talk about, right? Now, there's another way. See, it's all right. So there's another way that we can share the gospel, right? This is from talking about Genesis to the time of Jesus Christ, right? Now, for example, the first way is you told them about the four spiritual laws. Now you're talking through the word of God. You say, okay, this is what happened from Genesis to the time Jesus Christ was born. Right? Now, how can you start off? One, creation of man, its purpose. So from Genesis, you can say, God created man for a purpose. Right? And what was that purpose? To have relationship with God. Then there was fall. Because of sin, man fell. And again, there's consequences. Then man tried to attempt to reach God. Right? How? When you see the Old Testament, what did God do? God said, I'm going to, you know, uh, even though Israel as a nation, you have turned away from me. But these are the ways that you can draw near to me. Do you have a Old Testament survey going on? Right? So you study about that, right? God said, you have these offerings. 
you have to fulfill these things. You build a temple out of court, in a court, most holy place. And then you bring your offering and you cut a lamb, cut, a goat, cut, a, cut the offering, bring the blood, give it to the high priest. The high priest takes it, does the sacrifice, your sins are forgiven. In another place, he says, you cut the once a year, the high priest goes into the Holy of Holies, and that is for the remission of sins for the entire nation of Israel. Right? Now, that is man's attempt to go closer to God. Right? And then God reaches out to man through the cross of Jesus Christ. Right? Through the cross, first, before that, man was trying to reach God, but now God is reaching out to man. So immediately their thinking changes, right? Their understanding changes. And they're like, wow, God is trying to reach out to me. Right? And so very important. Give examples. How's God trying to reach out to you? I'm sure everyone that you minister to will go through some problem. There is nobody in this world who doesn't have any problem. Is there anyone? Any of you can say, I don't have a problem. Tell me, I'll give you a box. Give me some assignments. We all have a problem. We all go through challenges. And so when you're ministering to people, you can always come from that point of view, right? Reaching out to their problem or their problem, right? And saying that, hey, through Christ, through the cross, through Jesus, we can find forgiveness. You know, one of the things that happened to me was when I was sharing the gospel with people, I used to always think, but if I say Jesus, how will they agree? Like, how will they agree? How will they agree? Jesus, yeah, I know the power of Jesus, but they don't know. No? I can just keep telling Jesus 100 times, but what about them? They should believe. No? They are staunch in their other ways. A strong believer in the Right. So I had to tell myself, I had to ask the Holy Spirit to convict me to understand that this simple gospel, Jesus died for your sins, can touch a person's life. But we must be convicted of it. Right? You get what I'm saying? Yes or no? Right? We must be convicted of it. Only then we can share it with others. Right? And then the invitation to believe. And, it, and the invitation is to everyone. God does not choose who to invite. The Bible says all of us, all of us, right? Whoever is in Christ is a new creation. Can be black, brown, fair, tall, dark, anything, it doesn't matter. Language, cultures don't matter. God, the invitation is available to all of them, right? So, the wrong understanding to do is to think, okay, finally I am saved, I'm going to heaven as long as I go, everything's okay. I don't think this guy is, you know, will ever receive the gospel, or I don't think this person will ever receive the gospel. We have to never come to that country. How many of you have thought that when you looked at a person or thought of sharing the gospel with the person? How many of you have thought that? You have, right? I don't think this person will accept it. You must come out of that shell. You must come out of that thinking, right? I'm not saying it's wrong to think that. I have thought that, right? I have many times in my mind, I've thought, I don't think this person. But it is the power of God to salvation, right? So we must be convicted in our hearts, right? So what are this other, the other way? Creation to Christ and what Jesus did. And then you have a two minute testimony. And this is a powerful way of sharing the gospel with people, right? So for example, I come to Vimal and I say, hey Vimal, no, I'm very sad, being very broken, being very, what is the first thing Vimal should say? Very good. <laughs> what, 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 what must Vimal say? Obviously, you start a conversation saying, what happened? 
you know, uh, my somebody in my family is unwell, things are not going well, I'm in the hospital, and you know, the doctor said maybe two, three months. So there comes your testimony time. You have two or three minutes to bring the gospel out. Now, what would be the wrong thing to do? Sit down. You know the book of uh, Isaiah, what it says? <laughs> and the fellow is going through some problem. Right? And the moment you say book of Isaiah, he says, who is Isaiah now? <laughs> Why do I want to know about Isaiah? That's the wrong thing, right? But the first thing we must say, say, hey, you know what happened? In my life, this is what happened. You're giving a true situation, a true testimony, a real thing. It's not a story. It's a real thing that happened. In you know, my life, my mother was this way. She was unwell. He prayed. Pray to Jesus. It was hard to believe. He prayed. And the Lord Jesus healed her. Now she's alive. And she's well. Two minutes. He got the attention of that person. So two minute testimony is very important. How your life was before Christ. How your life is after Christ. You know, my boy used to do this, nice to sin, nice to talk rudely, nice to uh, back answer my parents. You know, after Christ, I feel there's something different. I feel that God has changed me. I feel like a better person. Right? Now, how you receive Christ is also a wonderful way of bringing up the testimony. Initially, when I accepted the Lord, people used to call me to share the testimony. Share, share the testimony. So I used to share my testimony a lot. And many times, people used to come and ask me, oh, really, this is what happened. And they were, there was some change, right? Something in their heart. And so your testimony may not be something very dramatic or, you know, maybe it's something very simple. But it's your testimony, right? You may be your pastor's son or a daughter. And there's no major testimony. You grew up in the church, you're still lovely, and everything is okay. But it's your testimony of God's goodness, right? So all of us have a testimony. And we can share that testimony. You can also talk about, you know, uh, specific changes that happened in your life through in your testimony. Right? Use words like purpose, meaning, direction. Right? Uh, you know, when I when I was in college, I didn't have any direction. Of, I didn't have any purpose in life. I didn't know why I'm living. Uh, I had a lot of questions. But after I came to Christ, I knew that God has called me to be His child. I knew that I had purpose. I knew that God loves me. People may not love me, people may mock me, make fun of me, but I know that God loves me. So immediately there's something that will penetrate that. Right? Now remember, it's also the way we put things across. Right? I was just teaching the second year, talking to them about wisdom. Right? We can have a lot of knowledge, but if we don't walk in wisdom, many ministries have failed that. Many pastors and leaders you know, I've, spoke, you know, I've spoken to, they have failed. Why? Because they have a lot of knowledge but no wisdom. Done things the wrong way. Right? But they truly love God, truly love the scriptures, very good teachers, very good preachers. But they haven't applied that in their daily walk with God. Right? And so that's why wisdom is very important. Right? Uh, even each one of you, you graduate maybe first, second, third year, you have a lot of head knowledge. You need to ask God to give you the wisdom. Wisdom comes by learning from your failures. Wisdom comes by asking the Holy Spirit for guidance. Right? And, and so this two-minute testimony is very, very important. It can really touch a person's life. Now, it can be as simple as, you know, for example, there's, there's one friend of mine that I used to always share the gospel with him. And he asked me, hey, how did you learn guitar? He said, I don't know, I didn't go for classes and all that. Even I used to wonder, how do I learn? I don't know anything. Uh, but I started to watch people, I started to ask. And then uh, somehow I learned. So he was very fascinated. How did you learn keyboard? 
what I learned in the beginners is translated somehow and then it's very fascinating. I also want to see, but one thing more, I depended on God. That took him back. I said, No, I don't really want to back. Then I said, See, this is what had happened to me. I believed in God. I trusted that God can, the abilities that I have is given by God, and I have to, you know, use it for God's glory. So I asked God to help me. I said, Why don't you try it? Why don't you try it? Ask God to help you. Why, I will give you a guitar. Ask God to help you. I'll teach you as much as I can. Would you ask God to give you the wisdom to teach you? He will. So he said, okay, I'll try it. So he began to, okay, and I gave him the guitar and he would go. And I would tell him, you know, these are some calls you can learn this way. And he started on the guitar. And I said, pray before you ask, before you start. Um, you pray. You just ask God. Say, Jesus, please help me. So he did it very faithfully. And in one year, he was really good in guitar. No classes. Really good. I was really impressed by the way he had learned. He put a lot of fun work. But after one year, he came up to me and said, Oh, more than the guitar, I enjoyed the five minutes of prayer before learning the guitar. I felt that something was telling me, or somebody was telling me what to do, how to play, when to change chords. I felt somebody was telling me. So then that gave me an opportunity. Right? So who's that somebody? So you pray to Jesus, it's Jesus who's answering you. Why don't you give your life to him? And he'll take you from here to, to places that you can't even imagine. He said, Yeah, I'm ready to do that. So more in the end, it was not the guitar in that he was interested in. He was interested in knowing more. He's a wonderful worship leader, leading worship in many places. Right? So you never know what small act can touch people's lives. Right? You get what I'm saying? Right? Experience of what your need was, your divine intervention with God. What was the need? What did the Lord do? And how the Lord can even minister to them. Now it's important to understand that when we are ministering to people, no, it's we must not feel that we are greater or superior than them. The Lord Jesus, when you look at his ministry, he never thought superior to the people around him, right? He always walked in humility. There is power in walking in humility. Right? When we walk in humility, there is actually authority. Yes? Right? Jesus walked in humility, but he also walked in authority. He, he was humble enough to sit with the poor, sit with the lepers. Remember that picture? It was such a powerful picture of this. That a leper, again, I'm sharing this. The leper who came to him, Jesus was on the way to Samaria. He is going to. Uh, another town is passing through Samaria, and the leper comes to him. Right. Now, those who are lepers were always to be outside of the city. They were not to mingle with the people in the crowd in, in, in the city, outside the city. And the leper somehow probably escaped that place and came. And when he saw Jesus, he said, Lord, if you're willing, clean me. If you're willing, to, if you're willing you can heal me. And cleanse me from this leprosy. Now, what did Jesus do? What did he say? Yeah. I am? I believe. He said, I believe. Did Jesus say, Now tell me what this is. all of this has happened to you because your grandfather and your father all are doing all the wrong things. Now you went up with them. You go pray five times a day. Right? Come back next month and then I will kill you. Did Jesus say all that? All he said was, I am willing. You see the humility there. Jesus didn't despise him and say, you know, thousands of people are waiting for me there. I go and come back. He didn't despise him. He was humble enough for that one person. Right? 
humility is really the key in ministry, right? When we're ministering to people, walk in humility. Then, very important is the work of the Holy Spirit towards the unsaved. Now, you have done the work of sharing the gospel, right? Who makes the change in a person's heart? Hmm? The Holy Spirit, right? So we must depend on the Holy Spirit to make the change, right? Don't shake a person and force them and say, okay, you believe Jesus now only. Then you can have one thing, okay, two people finish sharing and receiving Jesus. No, right? Remember, it is the work of the Holy Spirit, right? It is the Holy Spirit who convicts a believer of sin, who convicts them of righteousness and judgment. Now, let me give you an example of the power of the Holy Spirit. How many of you have the Holy Spirit inside you? He's powerful. What does the Bible say? Greater is He that is in you. Now, let me tell you, I'm just giving you an example of the power of the Holy Spirit. He's powerful. He is strong. He is mighty. He is the Spirit of God. Right? The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in you and me. Do you believe that or is that this one Bible verse? Yes or no? Why are you all staring at me? <laughs> Do you believe that or no? Right? You believe the Holy Spirit is inside you? You believe you're walking in authority, right? You may not feel it. You may feel that oh, I'm such a weak person. No, 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 no. The Holy Spirit is inside you, right? So, what does the Holy Spirit do in the unbelievers' life? He convicts them of sin, righteousness, and judgment. He says, "You may look, you may feel like a sinner, but for me, the Holy Spirit is saying you have a right standing with God." So when you, you have the authority to stand in front of God. In the Old Testament, what they would do was, when the high priest would take the blood of the lamb once a year to go into the Holy of Holies, history says that they will clamp the, the, the feet with a chain. Right? And so this high priest would go into the Holy of Holies. If there was found any sin in the high priest which was unconfessed or some secret sin in his life he would drop dead in that place and they would drag the body out of the chain nobody dare goes into the holy of holies with sin in their heart that's a picture right now jesus is saying you and i have a right standing before god so basically, we can go to God with all our sin and all our failures. He's willing to forgive us and make us right with God. Which is better, Old Testament, New Testament. Right? Into the, now we say, no, I enter the Holy of Holies. How we enter? For the blood of God, the blood of the Lamb. So remember that the Holy Spirit who's working in that person is much more powerful than you and me. Right? We may be weak, we may not be very good in our speech, right? Uh, we may have a lot of limitations. But the few words that we speak can bring life into that other person. I'll give you the story, right? Once there was a prison named in Angola in the West, Angola prison, right? And here were all the hardcore criminals, criminals who were there for life, sentenced for life, right? And it was known as the most dangerous prison in the world, right? Why? Because the, the police officers themselves were scared to work there. They would kill the police officers as well. Right. It's such a dangerous prison outside the city near Angola. Nobody wanted to work there. This happened in the early 80s. Nobody wanted to go there. But there was this one man, he was a police officer. He said, I will go there and work as a 
what in order to in charge them. He was a believer. And I told him, so uh, you know, his family said, no, but may lose your life. It's the most dangerous thing by you. He said, no, I, I need to show people that the Holy Spirit is real. He can do something. So I want to see it in my life and I want to see the work of the Holy Spirit. So he decided to go. He went and first thing he did was he gave everyone Bibles in the uh, prison. People tore the pages of the Bible and used it as cigarette paper. Tore it and used it as toilet paper. But he would keep sticking the verses in everything that they would tear those things. Right? And after about two, three years, he began to share the gospel with a few of the inmates there. Right? And so as he was sharing, God led him, I'm just cutting the story short, God led him to share with this one inmate. And that person just broke down. And he became a believer. One believer. Right? The most there, everyone was mocking, hey Jesus, what Jesus is doing, you know, mocking him and trying to make fun of him. They even tried to kill him. How can he bring all this thing? And another time, another man tore a page of the Bible, was putting cigarette paper, and he wanted to, you know, uh, smoke a cigarette with that Bible page. And as he was doing that, uh, uh, he read a verse as he was rolling. It was John 3 60. God so loved the woman that he gave his own son. There was something in him, he fell to his knees and he gave his life to Christ. Now, from one, it became two. They began to start a Bible study group inside Animal of Prison. For three of them the prisoner, two prisoners, and the police chief in charge of them. Then it became five, it became ten. Finally, there were 800 people sitting for the Bible study every Sunday. They had a Sunday service where worship team would come from a different place. Churches would send worship teams to come to lead the worship. Guest speakers would come, reach to 800 people, 800 believers. All of them gave their life to Christ. Okay, and it came to be known as the most safest place, even outside of the prison. Whose work is that? The work of the Holy Spirit. People were going to their electric chair to die. They were singing, they were clapping and singing praises to God. I'm going to see him face to face now. And they're going to the electric chair and they're saying, they're singing songs of joy. I'm going to see the one. And they had to go through the sentence of, you know, singing. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. He can convict the hardest of soul and bring them to Christ. So we are nobody to judge a person by their looks, or by their appearance, or by the things that they do and say. Right? Do we believe this? Right? We must. We must. Right? Our goal is to share the gospel and expect Jesus and expect the Holy Spirit to do the convicting. Now, there will be times that we share and nothing may happen. It's all right. Don't lose heart, right? Uh, don't lose courage. Uh, just a moment, please. Uh, can you tell me? All right, so that's what the Holy Spirit does. He, the work of the Holy Spirit to the unsaved, he can change, he can remove, break every chain. You know, we sing that song, no? There's power in the name of Jesus. We sing it every time. But are we truly believing that, that he can break every chain? Are we truly believing that? They must, right? You know, there's a saying, you know, Christians don't speak lies, they sing lies. Worship is not about singing songs. No, it's not charging. It's not charging. 
uh, worship is not about songs or the melody or the tune, right? It's not about any of that. Worship is about the truth of the Holy Spirit being revealed in our lives. Right? So we've completed chapter two. We ended our time. So we'll uh, so what we will do is we will close for now. Sorry about the delay of online students. Start the delay. Uh, but I hope everyone is uh, able to understand and pick up. Right? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we'll stop here. We we'll pick up next uh, week on power and love. Jesus ministered in power. He ministered in love. And what he wants for us. Okay, let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you for what we have learned today, Lord. We thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that convicts, that brings righteousness and justice, that are the foundations of your throne. Lord, thank you for your presence in our lives. And Lord, I pray, God, that you will equip us, empower us to be children that will truly bring the gospel to people around us. May your anointing, may your power fill our lives. We thank you. We thank you for this wonderful opportunity, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you will teach us and, and help us, Lord, even in our weakness. You be our strength. We, we give you all the praise, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Sorry again for the special weekly week, 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 week.